loosen them? You it still hurts though. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know if. You know, I kept thinking it was probably the size of my ears. Maybe they're too big for the, uh, you know, the generic uh, ones that they follow, the generic slides that they have. And I thought maybe that's why. But then it hurts everybody, from what I gather. I think those DJ ears, like, actually are huge and go all the way around the whole ear. Anything that, anything that puts any pressure on the ear is going to hurt. This is important about headphones. That's, good. that's one of the big things about this. <laughs> hey, I tell you, you know, um, when you're, you're trying to get out of body and you know, you're trying to train yourself, uh, little things like that will keep you from even try getting anywhere because yeah. if, if it's hurting your ears, you have a pain. So what you do is you associate pain with out of body and you're not gonna do it. Unless so. it's the mild discomfort that we need. Hi, I'm Kiko. I've been meditating for several years now. I'm certainly not as, as experienced as everybody else in the group, but um, I'm looking forward to learning more about consciousness practices in general. That's why I'm here. I'm Stephanie, and I started this stuff when I was 13. I got into Robert Bruce material online about 15 or so and about six months of hard effort it finally worked and I had my first OBE and I've had maybe ten or so since then and I got distracted, I got my you know, life kicked in, um, went to college and always meant to get back into this stuff, I really miss it and I couldn't quite get the dedication that it took, uh, it takes uh, routine meditation and um, effort so um, finally found a group that focused on doing this and um, also added to it with the, uh, my Sunday group on, online. You can call in uh, from anywhere as long as you can get long distance to a U.S. number. I have a 90-day guide to astral projection study group and everyone's welcome. Thanks. I'm Don and uh, I've been doing out-of-body uh, astral projection, uh, drumming, shamanic journey uh, for probably 30 years or more um, and I've been doing it with a bunch of great people here recently last probably year and a half and uh, we've really been concentrating on uh, out of body uh, you know lucid dreaming we got a great bunch of people and I encourage anybody that even has an inkling to do this is to do it, is to get with a group of people or like-minded people and explore. Don't be afraid. Thanks. I'm well, Judy. Well, I love astral projection. Um, I've had a few uh, OBEs through the years and, uh, and several or a couple of recent lucid dreams. And I'm excited and looking forward to more. Hi, I'm Juice, and this group has been going on now for a year and a half this month. I want to get together like-minded individuals who are interested in this subject, astral projection, OBEs, and lucid dreaming, and get everybody together to motivate each other. Realizing since I started doing this when I was 13, and that actually actually projected before, uh, to get like-minded people together to help each other to do this, either people that have done it already, or people that are trying to do it and get just a whole group of people together to help each other. Either people that are actually getting out that want to get out even more and to learn new techniques and people, new people like myself that uh, actually haven't got out but been interested in this for a long time or even people that have just started to hear about it and are interested in it. And to not kind of break up the medicines with laughter. Treat me like a fool. Treat me man and cruel. Oh, baby. Since you're in a, a, a black, it's all black. So it's a neutral place. It's that you're meeting different entities, and entities are meeting you there, and there's no outside interference. You know, there's no trees, there's no other animals, no. Uh, you know, okay. no worlds or anything like that, so it's a neutral. Okay. And so 
in in some ways when you do out of bodies and the lucid dreaming you're looking for the place that veil okay there's a veil the Kabbalah says about the veil mm -hmm. and it's like that neutral just before you go over to the other side or you continue on you break through you come out of your humanness and you become spirit or you become energy mm -hmm. and so that's where the neutral is and so some people meet okay. there and then they rally or they meet or they see right they're able to see that through the the veil and then they can walk and they're not scared they don't get uh, uh, disarranged or anything disoriented and stuff like that so that's that's a that's what they call neutral and it could be between the, the worlds so you have a neutral and whenever you do you step from one to another okay so you're there's always a neutral there's always mm -hmm. a stop and a go stop and a go you know so you stop one and you step into another and you do this you know so many times a minute you do it billions of times a minute you know a second and that's how you can see that you have movement because you are actually going through each little and so whenever you do that if you can stop yourself in that neutral and you can prepare and you also can can wait and meet halfway something that comes so there's so many there's so much to it. I hope I answered that pretty good for you. Yeah. So, if you're in that air, if you're in that, don't feel panic. That's a beautiful spot mm -hmm. because, you know, it's it's infinite. It's it's vast. You know, it's everything, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's beauty so, in itself. So, um, so I have a question then. Okay. Uh, what bodily sensations do you feel when you're in that ne neutral space? You can feel cold. You can feel, you can look at and watch your breath. So it's different for everyone? Yeah. It's, all right, all right let me take this. All right. Let's take a circle, okay? Imagine a circle and cut it like you would a pie and all these little pieces, okay? That piece, so set yourself in that pie on that one piece, okay, that little bitty piece. Mm -hmm. That is your world. Everything, the mm -hmm. universe, everything mm -hmm. is yours. And Stephanie sitting right next to you on that pie, and then I'm sitting right next to you, and we are totally different. Mm -hmm. Our worlds are, are totally different. What we see and what we are gathering is totally different. You might be freezing, you know, cold. And I might be sweating, and I come back and go, man, I had nothing but heat. Mm -hmm. Judy, Judy may be saying, man, I, I slept. And uh, Stephanie might go, man, I was chased by all these entities. So, you know, it, what it does is that's what's so awesome about out of body, about lucid dreaming and everything. Everybody's is different, but it's all the same. You see, it, it's just that your interpretation and what makes you what you grew up, how you grew up and how you see life in some way, that's how you look at and you see your lucid dreams. Okay, I, I get that. But I, I feel like that's passing over um, the realm of a neutral space because I would assume that a neutral space what would make a neutral space neutral would be beyond feeling, beyond your, you know, your conditioning, beyond your learning and all of that. I would assume, I mean, when you said neutral space, I thought that that's... Okay, what... right, let me show you something. Let me, let me show you a cool way how, maybe give you an example. Okay. This is a neutral. I'm in a neutral spot. Okay. <coughs> so... In some ways, this is how you would see yourself in the neutral. 
Right? There's nothing around you. It's it's just white. There's nothing here. Mm -hmm. So that could be neutral. And you know that it's neutral. But here's the veil. So you look through the veil and you're still in the neutral. But you see things or you feel things or you express things. And so you get yourself ready and you go through the veil. So you continue on. Does that help? You know, by showing like this is, would be neutral, you know? Tom, are you familiar with uh, Focus 21? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that the same thing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. You know, and so that's so, how another way how to look at the neutral. And the neutral can be beautiful because there's silence. To you, it might be silence. To me, the neutral could be, hey, I'm at a bus station waiting for the bus to come in from this other reality. And that's the neutral for me. So, so, wait, so wait. you know, it, it, what it, you know, you don't, you don't put yourself in a box. You just go with it. And if you feel a certain way, and, that, and you feel that that's how neutral was expressed to you, mm. then go with it. Okay. You know, because that helps. Does that kind of help? Yes. On the Margo group, <laughs> they have um, Focus 21. You know, they have like Focus 10, 12, all those other students. But um, yeah, take my break, guys. Oh, I'm one. I'm number one. I'm number one. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> I was, um, should we turn off the fan so that it doesn't have the noise? Okay, do that. Yeah, because it's... So, I'm sorry about this, though. Oh, no, 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 it, it wasn't, uh, um. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Would anybody like to share? I'm very nice. I like that voice, the very smooth, milky voice. Very relaxing. I thought <coughs> I didn't do it for me today. Not today, yeah. Yeah, I it did. does matter when you meditate. Beforehand? No, what time of day you're doing it? Oh. Depending on what type of results you're looking for, I guess. Yeah, if you're just looking to clear your mind, and that could be almost okay. any day. It but. sounds like it didn't work for you either. <laughs> nope. Yeah. But. But it's practice, so it's mm -hmm. just quieting the mind, and that benefit that the benefit from that's cool, just trying to stop the chatter. So that's I'm happy with that. Yeah, <clears throat> I didn't get that much out of it. I did last time. This is my third time with oh. that particular meditation, and um. The first time was pretty awesome, the second time was pretty neat too. And then this one, um, I had a sinus infection, there's something going on in the back of my throat. And I kept becoming really aware of it, like the itch in the back, and then of the energy that's causing the sinus infection. And so in a way it was very healing, but I feel like I couldn't really go anywhere or do anything until I addressed that. So I kind of gave up on trying to meet you guys. And just focused, went ahead and focused exclusively on that and got some good work done. So, cool. Um, I felt uh, awareness of you at one point. Like you kind of like tried to check on me, in on me for a moment. Um, I was checking in on everyone. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Bits and pieces. Okay. It's when I, I felt, it's, yeah, it's when I felt that I was in the right state of mind is when I would reach out to everyone. And I'd be like, hey, how's it going? You know. But then there was something holding me back, just like you. It was your throat. It was for me. I felt, I felt like I was being constantly pulled down and being pulled up simultaneously. Don. And so I couldn't. <laughs> I, was Don I, doing? I, it? I, I don't know. Like, but that. I, so I was feeling feeling two forces, you know. Yeah. Hmm. And so I was trying to deal with that the entire time. There's a lot going on right now. I don't know if that's going to do with it in the world. Hmm. So I don't know. Just thought I'd throw that out there. I was trying to get in touch with Don, but no, Don was busy. No, actually, uh, from my point of view, we yeah. all we all met at uh, downstairs, and Juice and Judy were kind of slow. 
Okay. And, yeah, I feel. I feel and that. And I grabbed. I grabbed you. You were there, and then I came, and I, I said. I was there before you came. Yeah. And yeah. I was so we grabbed Kiko, and grabbed her, and said, "Okay, you're going to stay right here with us. You're not going anywhere." <laughs> and then I grabbed Juice. I said, "Get over here," and Judy, because it's like Juice was over there going. Don, I did feel myself moving, like you know when you feel when you see pictures, hypnagogic pictures, and you, I felt movement. I saw a movement. Which direction? Um, upwards. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Now. That behind the eyelids. Things, though. Did you feel it or did you see it? I saw it behind the eyelids. Oh. Like I saw see? like the imagery that you get sometimes with behind your eyes. So yeah, you not vividly, like, but you know, like pixelated. I okay. saw stuff like myself okay. moving, motion. Okay, once once we got there, okay, I said, all right, we're going to take off. So everybody, grab your hand. You were this side. Judy was on your side. Hmm. Juice was over here, and you were the last over here. So we were in a kind of V. Okay. And I said, okay, here we go. So we just took off. And I said, we're going to, we're going to go to this, this place. And we went to the ship. And then we went into the back of the ship. And we just landed. And we opened the door. And we all were holding hands. We opened the door. And there was all these different people. All these different being there and so every time that we walked from one little room or cell whatever you want to call it we opened the door and I said to Kiko I said now you see this is the neutral you feel the neutral and you go yeah I can feel it now so we opened the door it was like a big, you know, a ship door, you know, a submarine, you know, and how you see the hatch. And we walked through it, and it was like a whole different atmosphere, a whole different bunch of beings. And it just continued. Mm. And so I took off. I said, okay, guys, I'm, I'm going to take off. <laughs> <laughs> and so I went off. You just left us all there. <laughs> yeah, we were in good hands. Uh, and I went, and I went, and I found this entity, this uh, named Tom. And he introduced himself, and he says, yeah, I'm extraterrestrial, you know. Uh, and I seen this one person that was with him had a, he was totally white, and he had a big head like this very small body and he said hi and he didn't introduce his, himself and Tom said he was from the Pleiades and uh, so hung out there talked a little bit then I came back and I said okay you guys ready you want to go somewhere else and so I said, I'm going to change into my ego. You guys get up on my back. And uh, so you got up, and you grabbed one of my feathers, and I changed, and we just all took off. And we just flew for a while. And then you got, you went and did your thing, it's like you just floated into the air. You went and did your thing, and so on. Mm -hmm. And so I came out, and I was sitting here. Then I said, okay, I'm going to go back in. So what I did was, laying in the chair, I came out through my head, and I did a dive, and I took off again. Let's go. So, and uh, then I came back, checked on you guys, and everybody was back, and we talked for a minute. I said, what'd you think? What'd you guys, uh, yeah, uh, huh? 
and you were excited, and you were excited, Judas. Judy, you were just kind of like, uh, well, you know, <laughs> you know, doing the Judy, you know. Uh, doing the Judy. <laughs> 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 That's so funny. And uh, and so I said, "What'd you guys think?" And you go, "Yeah." And I said, "Well, I don't, I didn't like the meditation because it was too slow, and I just went ahead and took off anyway." <laughs> And it was kind of hindering because it kept yeah. on trying to bring you back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had that a couple of times. And uh, but I, I felt, I felt your uh, enthusiasm. I felt your excitement. Mm. You were enjoying yourself. I think, to me, and what I was seeing is that you were breaking through, and you, and you finally got a piece of something, whatever that piece is. That's you know for you. But you were excited because it's like, you know, you were, you went, you did something, you knew that you were doing it, so, and that's different from the past, I guess, and, so, anyway, that's, that's pretty much it in a nutshell, I could go on. Well, I don't want to sound negative before when I said that, but I do feel things like that. But you guys know what I'm looking for, so I don't want to sound like it was a waste of time. It wasn't. You know, I, I like the the images I get and stuff like that, too. I'm being moved, but I might be just disconnecting when you guys go or something. Well, you know, you call it a, whatever you want to call it. And yeah. It's okay. You know, to me, all right, I, I seen it was too slow, and so I said, I'm going to make something happen here. I'm going to go and I'm going to go out and uh, so that's what I did and uh, in the in the meantime I had pains going through my body you know I, I felt the pains I felt my I had this something right here just started like an itch and I went no I'm not going to itch it you know and so then all of a sudden my toe my middle toe just went, just blew up. It just started really painful. And I said, okay, I know that I'm doing something because my body is trying to keep me back. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's that defensive mm -hmm. mechanism that I still have. And, but I know I recognize that, okay, then just keep on going. And then what I did is I went inside and I did a healing area that I've been See? wanting to busy. And, uh, I feel like I tried to take it on me. So, and, so that's, so I had a very, it wasn't the meditation itself that was actually a hindrance to me, but I just ignored it and went on. Um, so, anyway. Um, I felt that at first, but I thought, wherever you're going is way too high vibration for me at this time. Mm -hmm. And that high vibration was pinging in my throat, and it's like, e I can't follow you till I deal with this thing. So I was kind of sort of there, but I had to come back and deal with it. We, we got to try something. We got to try something, guys. Um, we got to do a meditation at about 10 o'clock on a Saturday or Sunday. Morning, evening. Huh? Morning, morning. Morning. Okay. In the morning, we gotta we gotta do one after you've been up. Okay. And you're rested. Oh, that wouldn't happen at two. <laughs> well, well, so that's what that's what's you, tough about to, that. You'll have to get up early. Okay. You have I'm to sorry. Get to bed a little bit earlier. But you yeah. can see the meditation actually mentioned that in there too. It wanted you to after the meditation go to sleep for an hour and a half or so. Uh -huh. Yeah. If you followed it f uh, fully through. But I think. And they want you to do it in the morning. Right. But I, I like to do a meditation with everybody in the morning and see what what happens. I meditate every morning anyway. Between, it, it varies on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, what kind of meditation do you do? Um, I don't have a specific name for it. I just kind well, of, I mean, what I'm asking. Um, oh, like what exactly do I do? Well, do you want to go out? Do you go out or do you go in, in, in inside? I go in. Okay. So you go inside and 
maybe do a little healing, yes. rearranging and stuff yes. like that. Well, m maybe we do one at 10 or 10 or 11, you know, noon, noonish, you know, <laughs> and, and do a, a long one and uh, everybody go out instead of going in. Okay. That would be cool. And uh, because, you know, okay, sometimes meditation, and I have to agree with the guy that said it last night or the night before, that meditation sometimes is you, you put things in a box, you know. Hmm. So let's not meditate as far as just meditating. Let's contact, let's go, let's leave. Everybody leave their bodies. Just, you know, instead of saying meditation, no, we're going to go and do an OBE. We're going to go out. Hmm. And whatever that does, juice whatever, how you do it, whatever, Judy's same way. And let's just do it. And, uh, and so instead of saying meditation, saying an, we're going to do an out of body. And so we just pick something that's kind of uh, appropriate and juice, uh, you know, whatever we've used in the past that people like. Right. I'll pick a nice one. And, or, you know, maybe if you want, I bring my, my, my drumming, my drums. Oh, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Or this other uh, meditation that I've got. You know, the ones that I t uh, played for you? Mm -hmm. And uh, and maybe try that. Okay. So, what do you think? That sounds good to me. Judy, how'd you f feel on this meditation? Yeah, we'll get some today. Dogs, you know, like somebody bring bring donuts um, or something. What I have <laughs> when I do like the you know uh, mind awake, body asleep. I hear myself. My my breathing changes, and I hear it. And I don't want to distract anybody, so I keep stopping myself. And um, so I, I was struggling with that for a long time. I, you know, I'd get there and and then I'd hear my breathing change, and, and I didn't want to distract anybody. But um, other than that, I felt like I was kind of coming and going. Um, that's about all I can say right now. Thanks. Anybody else want to share? I have something to share. <laughs> okay, it's um, really funny, Judy, that you mentioned that you have trouble breathing and that you hold yourself back from it because... I don't have trouble breathing. I, when I start to get in that point, it I, your... yeah, my breathing changes and I feel like it's more audible because I can hear it and, and I, yeah, so I don't want to... I don't want anybody else to hear my breathing and get louder and change and, and distract anybody. But that's the, only time. the reason why I brought it up was because, well, I was, you know, when I had my eyes closed and I was lying down, I kept imagining myself, like, at first, obviously, I approached you and I asked you if it was okay, and I had a leaf on my hand, on the palm of my hand, and I you know, put it forward for you to take, and you took it from me. After which I um, kind of went in, like my energy went in the, and grabbed your heart, and I helped you, like, pump your heart. So I was, like, kind of helping you create a rhythm in your breathing, is what I was doing. And I kept imagining that. It kept coming back to me. So during those moments where I um, felt like I was, you know, kind of going somewhere and having these experiences was when... Whenever I would connect to you or reach out to you, that's what I was doing. Constantly, constantly, throughout today. Wow. Yeah. Did you give With me a symbol? I've been, I was giving everyone a symbol. <laughs> I saw a cactus. Close? It was in the Not shape really? of a cross, like a, like a Texas cactus. Oh, really? Uh-huh, green. Green, that's mm -hmm. good. Yeah, cool. I was throwing a lot of green out there. <laughs> plant green, so that's very oh. close. And yeah. then I show you my symbol back, in case you do anything. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> I was trying not to receive anything, because I was constantly uh -huh. trying to project that image and that, that essence. 
And that's probably why you thought that I was, you know, already there. Because I was so focused on that. Like, every time I would feel like, hey, I'm there, I was like, oh, I'll reach out to them, reach out to them. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's, what I, that's my goal. Was I, kinda gra I was kind of grabbing, keeping you, you know, with us. You know, it's like... Uh, Come back down here. <laughs> yeah. So where was I going? You were... Uh, Thunder. Wow. It sounded, it felt like to me that you were uh, trying to leave. Leave where? Like go where? Just trying to leave. I, I don't know if you were trying to get out of it or you were going, you wanted to go somewhere else. But you, you didn't want to stay with us. Hmm. And I wanted you to stay just for a minute to ground to talk to you that maybe you could, and I said, okay, I'm talking to you because I want you to see if you can answer me back after we come back. And I said, Stephanie, I said, listen and see if you can come back and say something to me that you remember me talking to you mm -hmm. at, you know, the driveway. And I said it to Juice and to Judy. And I said, look at me. This is very serious. I want you to remember what we're talking about right now. I want you to acknowledge us down here right now. And so that's what I kept on you know, holding you back for. I wanted you to, and then from there, to see if you guys came back and gave any kind of ink lanes or if you felt something or something like that so every so. time i checked in on you um you were working on something personal and there's kind of a um, layer or energy of um like privacy like privacy place and so i respected that um but and i felt that at some point that it's like Whoever you met was trying to heal you and had like a one-on-one -on -one session, and so that was really cool. Three times I, I went inside myself to heal myself, so three different times. So, um, so when I did that, I did it on a you know a block. Um, when I went out and talked to this Tom, I put a wall up because I didn't want anybody else to be with me. Mm -hmm. So, that, and everybody scattered, and, you know, because I just, when you guys were on this ship, and I said, okay, I'm, I gotta go and do something. So I said, I'll see you in a little bit. So, and I was, mm -hmm. was gone. And uh, Juice, you, and I have felt this before with you when we were up here doing uh, past meditations. Um, you hang out like you're waiting for something. You're waiting for the big entrance. And it's like, come on, dude. You're right here. You're right in front of us. You're right here inside this. And it's like you're waiting for your, your cue. So anyway, I, I would like, I would really like for you to work on that and drop that because you're there. You're there with us, right there. And you, so you're getting out. It's just that, like you said downstairs, you know, you wanted a certain way. And I think that that is just, uh, you're putting your, your limits on, my friend. And I'm going to keep on reinforcing <laughs> that and kicking you in the ass until you let go of it. Mm -hmm. So. Thanks, Don. But I think, I think tonight was pretty cool. I, I mean, I felt the energy of all of you. So. Well, thanks for sharing, okay. everyone. Okay, something to say. Oh, uh, and real quick, can we all just do like a thumbs up or thumbs down of the audio? I was going to put like a little poll on there okay. of what we did. Cool. Well, so I got to take notes. Thumb down. Oh. On, I mean, on the audio.
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean on. You mean the playing? On the audio. Huh? I really like the audio. Yeah. Okay, thumbs down for you, Don. Yeah, it was a little yeah. slow. Okay, yeah. staff. Thumbs up to the audio. I loved it. Kiko. I didn't feel it today. It's, it's a. You know, it, a thumb up the other day for it, a thumb down exactly. today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Judy? No, I liked it. Judy, my suggestion is that just do what you need to do. Okay? Don't worry about anybody else. Don't try to control your breathing yourself because of just do it. Because if people hear your snoring, they're supposed to hear your snoring or whatever, or your heavy breath. The ones that are not, they won't hear. So don't don't worry about interrupting anybody else because you can't blame anybody for yourself. I'm not blaming anybody. No, 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 what I'm saying is, if someone says, well, I couldn't go under because of Judy's, no, I heard Judy snore or heard her breath. That is, that's an excuse that they're trying to put on somebody else instead of looking at their own stuff. Okay, like I said, we are, everybody has their own little world. And so you are in that pie, your world is that whole piece. So you're the, the universe, everything is yours. So... And so people can't use you as an excuse, or me, or anybody else. So that's what I'm saying is, don't try to hold yourself back, thinking that you're you're going to disrupt somebody else. Just be yourself and go. Okay. So if somebody says, I kept hearing somebody breathing heavy, I'll be that, like, <laughs> but, that's okay, because Don told me it was okay. No, <laughs> no. But that's, no, I, that's yeah. their, that is them because yeah. they're using that to get themselves out of their meditation, mm -hmm. you know? And so they need to rise above that. They need to understand that that's part of human, uh, you know, we, we're we listening to a audio tape. So that in itself will keep you from going under, if you wanted to. And so I, I didn't particularly like it tonight, but I still took off. Mm -hmm. And I used it as a medium saying, okay, well, you know, it's all right, but it's not it's not something that I'm going to play tonight or tomorrow night for myself. But, you know, it's the energy. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah. Done, um, yep. So, and I, I just... Certain people say they can meditate no matter what noise they hear or anything. There's no excuse. Uh, like like tonight, was that know, Robert Bruce? Mm -hmm. When I was just sleep, meditate through his kids running around or something. Yeah. Robert Bruce can meditate in the middle of the living room with three kids on him. Right. <laughs> what, Crawling on him. When I uh, was downstairs and I said I can, uh, it's like I can be sitting here talking to you and I can take off. Well, I did. I actually took off, mm -hmm. and so I could almost tell you what I was doing. I was talking to Jews, and uh, and it's like one foot in spirit, one foot out of spirit, or in the neutral, whatever you want to call it. And there was a point where I was wondering if that's what you were doing while we were downstairs, when I was still down there, because your your talking changed a bit. I mean, you know, I mean, you were still talking and going on, but it, there was a change, and I was like, I wonder if he's still doing that now. You can you can catch subtle differences when I do that, you know, and um, and you guys can do the same thing. It's you know you just got to trust yourself. And I I've come back and said, man, I am and excuse my French here, but I am so fucking crazy. Jesus Christ, man, did I just dream that or what? Or what the hell did I just do? You know, so I I question myself all the time, going, God, man, I'm the craziest son of a bitch out here. <laughs> but well, what I'm saying is, is that it was so extreme, it was so it was so far out. I'm going, God, 
darn, where did that come from? You know, where did it, where did I, where did that come into my world? So sometimes I, you know, I, I look at myself and go, and I can't tell those people I seen that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I am, should be in a padded room. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say nothing. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I can go to that.